In the realm. Into the realm. In the realm. Here we go. Let's do it. Remy, Sam, and Ollie. Three, two, one. Let's go. <laughs> we're we're in. I like in. that. I like that. Remy. Remy. Three, two, one. We're live. Yeah. And this is the hardest part because Rem never shuts up. But I want him to do the intro. <laughs> <laughs> that so cool, mate. Voice. The intro. Yeah. We've already done it. What? Us or? What are we going to be doing on this podcast? So, fuck. What, are, we are. what aren't us, we going to do? Uh, what aren't we going to do, man? Yeah, this is us. So we, um, me and Sam were connected through Louis, mutual friend, this year. Um, we kind of hit it off, started recording our own chats, but didn't really do anything with it. That's where we had the name, actually, The Realm, weren't it? Um, we just talk about all things, man, like um, a lot to do with mindset, health, philosophy and stuff. Um, so I think we just want to explore the depths of our minds and, and stuff like that, but also relate them to current events and topics. And I think ultimately, I don't want to speak on behalf of you guys, but like, and I think a lot of people do the same thing when they're doing stuff like this. It's like, not to help people, but to make, to make it understood that most things are universal. Like, yeah. no, no one has a unique experience in this life, really. Like, I suppose you've got Elon Musk and shit, but like... Well, they have their own perspective on experiences that have been shared. Yeah. Yeah. You see it from a different angle, from but a different it's the same angle. thing, really. Yeah, yeah. Whether, like, when you talk about business and stuff, you could be talking to someone who's on a who's got a £10 million company and someone who's a sole trader carpenter, they've probably got relatively similar issues. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's on a different scale. Um, but yeah, I think it would just be good just to talk about all sorts of stuff like that. Obviously, me and Ollie know each other for, I don't know, Too long. 25 years probably or something. Yeah. Um, probably yeah. for the same amount that Sam's been alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy to yeah. think about that perspective. Yeah. I would have been one when you two met. Wow. Yeah. That's mad. Um, yeah. yeah, but we only recently connected, I suppose, didn't we? Yeah, connected again. Like, I think the universe brings people in and out of your lives at, at certain points, and like when, when you need to connect with people for a certain reason. Um, like you start putting out stuff, didn't you? And then talking about adding music to some of the videos you're putting out, but then I think we had a conversation at the start of the first lockdown. We're like, yeah, we're actually on the same level here with like what people want to talk about and what our minds just I think what your minds get up to. Mm which is pretty crazy when there's a certain way I try to explain how my mind thinks and it's hard to explain it. How does it think? Go on then. I don't even the know. The platform is set. It changes. Start from the beginning. Changes it changes like, it. It's in blocks, really. So e even when it came to recording this podcast, you think there's this block that comes on and I actually just see it in blocks in my head. And then I get overwhelmed with different, like, how wide that block is. You know, like, you actually see it. What's in the does, blocks? Like, what we're actually doing. And you think you've got to fill that with content and this content and that content. But yes. Yeah, so Why do you think you think like that? I think because I've just been. I think it's being programmed into like seeing like the eye calendar. Like on, on your phone, you see that in that block and you, you fit different things into it. Yeah. I think the beautiful thing about podcasts is in my head, whenever I've done a podcast or I've heard other people do it, you think it's a big thing, like it's another task to do. As soon as you start doing it and it gets organic and it just flows, you just have amazing conversations. Yeah. I think the reason we want to do this as well is that sometimes you have an amazing conversation and it's such a shame that it wasn't shared with other people. I think that's why anybody listens to a podcast. Unless you're looking for specific information, most people just want to be part of conversations. Yeah. I think that's why everyone just goes on their phone. I think that's why Joe Rogan's so successful because all the conversations Joe Rogan's had over the years, I'd love to have been in the room and had that as well. Oh, but the yeah. fact we get to hear it, so cool, the amount of conversations yeah. we've had and stuff, and we talk about some mad shit. There's people that would really love to have been involved in that. We've literally, we've been sat at Irvingham, and Ollie, someone come up to us, and oh man, you guys, I'd love to just listen to you guys. Wait, Ollie, yeah, came out about like, aliens or something. Yeah, yeah. We all came in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on, so what are you guys talking I mean, about? other than hanging out with friends, people genuinely aren't having that many interesting conversations. Like, people who like, live with their family, maybe, and it's the same routine conversations. They might try and find their friends to sort of, you know, open their mind a bit more. But there's, there's a lot of people that think a lot deeper, but their relationships and the people they have access to in their life, they're not probing any deeper than the, maybe the surface average level. surface level conversation. Yeah. I've noticed that so much. So people are really so craving much. a bit more depth. It doesn't mean you have to be deep all the time, but let's say, for example, we, all your conversations are superficial and they're like with your family, but you just want that one philosophical chat with a mate once a week. People don't really get that. 
And that's why I feel grateful to be connected to the guys who are uh, introduced to this year, like you guys, where you can just speak openly and freely. Because some of this stuff wouldn't land with some people. Some people just wouldn't register. They'd yeah. be like, what? But this is also the choice that people have. There's so many podcasts out there. Yeah. If they don't want to listen to it, then there's something else. Don't listen to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's other stuff to listen to. This is a cool conversation to have with you for anyway, and we just choose to record it and put it out there. Yeah. And someone might bother to listen because they you might know one of us. Yeah. And good. So go. What, what you were saying a minute ago, um, like going off brochure site and stuff like that. Mm. Since we met, mm. and we've we've said this like when me and Sam met once, we were camping at my at ghost. There was a load of us there, um, and yeah, we just we were sitting there. We were we were all on shrooms, fairly light dose, so it weren't like heavy. But we'd done there, uh, we all done shrooms, and then um, me and Sam were talking. So I'll try and explain, but like when you're on mushrooms in that kind of I don't want to call it a ceremonial environment. We don't have yeah. shame in there and stuff. It's not we're not in a fucking field doing a rave. We're quiet. We've got soulful music on. Like, do you know what I mean? Introspective. Yeah. But anyway, me and Sam are just quietly talking. Everyone else is quiet. And often when you're laying there, right, you're like, oh, man, everyone's having their journey. What's going on in everyone's head? Yeah. So me and Sam are like quiet and just talking. I don't know. An hour. Just like had a chat. It's the Eight. first night I met the guy. Right. And then we kind of like stopped. And I think one of us might have said like, oh, man, people are probably trying to have their own journey. Literally everyone was like, what are you guys doing? Keep talking. What the fuck? <laughs> we were like, what? Yeah, it was, That's so it weird. It was a weird yeah. But like, um, it almost felt like, I don't know, like you're getting changed in your bedroom and you're like, you're naked and stuff. And then suddenly you realise everyone's watching you. It was <laughs> yeah, the weirdest like, feeling. It was so strange. <laughs> we were talking so organically and it was naturally flowing and we were vibing. And everything you were saying, I was like, oh, I think the same thing. And we yeah. both were clicking and, and, um, and vibing. And then obviously every I thought I'm distracting everyone here by talking. Yeah. Just everyone was tuned in. It was it's mad. Good. They're like, you should do a podcast. <laughs> so I was like, there we go. go. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, and that's when you have those conversations. So I actually said to my partner today that something I've missed more this year than any other year, and I didn't realise that I am an introvert, but the last two years I've gone to an event called Baby Bar Four, and it's loads of entrepreneurs, six, seven figures and so on, big business owners just on an island. And everyone's just on the same level mm -hmm. and there's loads of stuff going on there's loads of alcohol there's loads of drugs and whatever going on but you get so much inspiration and you absorb so much like a sponge energy wise mm. so for the next two three four months afterwards i'm just on like a different oh, flow different. state yeah, yeah and yeah. then like you need like that travel of like even seeing clients and going to stay with them it's been like something i miss so much and notice like there's a lot of people around in norwich that I love to bits, but I can't have that conversation with. Yeah. Or even that it's it's being in that job, which some people love to have that nine to five job, but I, I don't. And I wanna know like, what can I push forward and push forward and push forward with, and then learn more and everything. And then just like you say, I've gone from this to this, like, yeah, but you're still doing well. Like, yeah, I am, but not on what my level of wealth is. Um, and it's finding that, that deeper level of like, pushing your mind to it. How did you find that baby bathwater group? Did you seek it or did it come into, because I find a lot of people, you know, they're looking for their tribe, let's just say. And I, I have been for years, but I think it's kind of, it's almost like I've done a lot of work on myself. And then as soon as I'm ready to then be aligned with the right people, it's the, the gate has opened up. Yes. Whereas if I met Rem, for example, two years ago, <clears throat> I was sort of the same person, but I not, might not have been ready to have the the sort of, the abundant sort of relationship that we have because I might not have been the right sort of version of myself at the time. So I find yeah. that this year everyone's sort of, the right people are out there for everybody and they're sort of trying to make go first and try and find them and connect with them. And that's the thing with like social media, it's a power for social media and stuff is from a good perspective. And I think if you didn't go and seek out, I don't know if you seek it out or not, but this group, that's where you've, you've actively gone to try and find people like-minded to get that inspiration from. Yeah, I yeah, I was training a client, um, a client in LA, he was like, oh yeah, you should check out Baby Barfoot, but the same week the guy that organised it asked to be trained by me. I'm like, well, that's obviously the universe doing its, its thing there. And then I got asked to do, do the training on the island or to talk about health and it turned into doing circuit training which I hadn't done for so long. I'm like, oh, this can be cool, out of my comfort zone. Most people were still high off something when they started training or whatever, but 
that was kind of an experience just on this concrete block doing circuit training. But I think it is like part of seeking it out, but also it was that connection at the right time. Mm. Because even then, like my client there, he paid like half or something to it. Like you tell anyone here, not anyone, you tell a lot of people here, especially from the circles that I've been through locally in Norwich about like paying like six grand for four days on a private island that you then have to pay to get there and then hotel the night before. Like, like what a waste of money. But you look at like the income it's investment right? investment off the back of that from those conversations. I think that's been a big thing, not having those not just that event, but like the travel mm -hmm. to get to different conversations. Like I think you done some like trips to Wales, didn't you or something? Mm -hmm. Like just having that like so you can go to that place and actually like Okay, I've just noticed that that stopped, but that's still recording, so we're good. We can still hear it. We, fuck it, it's the first one. Yeah, there's gonna be some uh, hiccups, but anyway, yeah, like we've kind of been stopped being able to have that freedom at the moment, so we're actually having to dive into our minds a bit more. We're not allowed. You know, well, you just said about that. This is the first time it may affect you, <clears throat> and it's not allowed it's, to impact you. Yeah, it's not. It's not allowed to. I'm not. I'm not letting it. I. I I don't know what I'll do. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's not really affected me so far. I mean, it has, obviously. We're talking about the lockdown like, rules. Yeah. yeah, but like... Yeah, we're recording this on the Sunday morning after they announced on the Saturday after these two done a little jog yesterday. Tons. A million. A little jog. <laughs> little jog times a million. Couple, yeah, a little family fun run. Yeah, Saturday stroll with the lads. <laughs> no, that, that's, let's talk about that because... Um, yeah, most people that are watching this will know that you guys tend to do 100. you got 90, which is fucking awesome. But I know there's a part of you that thinks... You well, I think, that. I think... Um, I think what it is, is that... It, 90 sounds... It sounds good to a lot of people. Mm. And it, it is. There's two marathons, right? But I want to do 100. Same. So it's like... It doesn't feel as big as what it probably should do. But at the same time, I think it's really worth noting, like, I'm not a fucking runner, man. Like, I'm <laughs> five foot seven. I weigh 81 kilos. Like, I'm, I'm chubby. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm not a runner. I'm not a thin fucking runner. Where you, Whenever I've watched videos on people doing 100K and stuff, they're, like, built like that. And they run. That's their I, I life. You, like, do you I know what I mean? Like, we are not runners. Like, yeah, we've done a couple of marathons this year. We've done a 50K. But like I didn't run for five months of this year. I'd done a fifty k, then did not run for like five months. Yeah. And like we ran a lot in November because of the challenge. That was it. Since the end of the challenge and yesterday, I'd done one run, and that was the one we done the half. Yeah. Tell a lie, I done a seven k. On top of that, I did the half. I, I did the half of you, and that felt so hard. Yeah. So hard. Yeah. Same with me. I, I'm not naturally a runner. I think my body weight and upper body specifically is probably too heavy for my lower body joints. So every time I run, it's not an enjoyable thing. I don't identify as a runner. And when you hear like ultra marathons, marathons, long distance runners, I'm doing those activities, but I feel like a, a fraud. So I don't feel like I'm actually yeah. in that zone of people. And we walked a lot, man. Yeah. Decent pace though. We kept yeah. up like a good hiking pace. But there's people who actually end, run that whole like, thing. Yeah, there's people who run the whole thing. Yeah, like, and I'm not one of those people. Yeah, I think like, <laughs> You always that you always comparing, aren't you? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like you see that like, I did not run a ninety k, really. I walked a lot of it. You moved ninety k across the earth's surface, but I didn't run ninety k. Yeah, you moved. So it's, this is this is where that sort of mindset is. It's a gift and a curse, man, because it gets you it gets you moving. It gets you going to the next thing, but at the same time, it's like when when are you going to be satisfied? But you won't settle. And because you won't settle, you'll keep having cool experiences because you keep pushing on. Well, that's. The hope. Mm. Well, do you think though? So the first marathon, had you run a marathon before? So this is where, like, this is where. I think for me this year, the word marathon, I associate now with what I would call a paradigm shift. Yep. So, again. I, I suppose whenever sometimes when you hear things, people you, you might not think like actually that's how it panned out or whatever. Louis texts me on the Saturday. Do you want to do a marathon tomorrow? And I went, all right. <laughs> no prep, no organisation. We, we didn't even you? know the route. Fifty? No, we done. We done a marathon okay. first, but like we didn't even know the route. We yeah. just went. 
We had a bottle of water and a small packet of Skittles at 13 miles when we stumbled across a fucking news agent, luckily. And then after that, didn't have anything till mile 23. And by that point, that was too late. I was fucked. I had to yeah. walk the last three miles. Like, my body... I just needed the food, though. That's all I needed. Yeah. But because I didn't eat, I didn't sustain myself. Um, but then I thought, fuck, if I could run 23 miles just off the bat like that... Imagine training. Imagine, imagine what I could do if I trained. Imagine dedicating well, a whole what, year what, to training. What else can I do? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, exactly. In, but in, it's, it's part of it, not the surprise of doing it, which is why if you had to train for that for a year... Would you have still done it? That's what I was then going to say. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's the well. I guess it's terminology, but like, it's more to do with if I train for a year. Like, imagine you're an Olympic athlete and you're training for four years for one day. Yeah. The pressure of that. If I'm training for a year for an event, the whole pressure of that event is like that's a lot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And also, not only like, I get the whole train hard, fight easy thing. But at the same time, I also understand that like, if, if I'm gonna build up a marathon, which most people would tell me I'd have to train for six months, <coughs> I need a week off work afterwards, I'm not gonna be able to do this for a week, I'm not gonna be able to do that. If, I, if you don't listen to all that and you just have your own experience in your own body on this earth, no input, without, yeah, with, no no, with no output, which I, for some reason or another, because it wasn't, we didn't even talk about it before. It weren't like, should we maybe do a marathon one day? That, that was just an idea. Mm -hmm. So we had none of that. So I think like your mind then doesn't build something up to be hard. Which makes it twice as hard. So you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you just do it. And well, it's like, oh, actually, yeah. Well, like in the period of your mind, or period of when it was only an hour's exercise allowed? This was so like Was, there, was this, there some this, rebelling mate, against it that actually pushed it more? Do you know what? Good point. So this was mid like heavy lockdown yeah we ran on the roads for 26 miles barely saw a car that was yeah. that quiet everywhere we went like we like ran in the countryside the it was amazing it? yeah um so yeah that was my first marathon but for me that just switched and thought fuck all these things people tell you are supposed to be like i i people message me you know i walk for a week on the monday me and louis went boxing prime, prime example right, i did my first marathon on saturday Sunday rest, Monday did a 10k. Yeah. Hold on. That's not really correct. Sam done his first half marathon on the Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday. Then marathon. And then a marathon then on a the 10K. Saturday and then a 10k on the Monday. But that's not allowed. You're supposed to increase your run distance by 10% each time and you're supposed to have a seven day rest after a marathon. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I get it to a degree from for some yeah, people. From an optimal, optimal point of view, if that is your sport and you're training for it and that's what the science says, yeah, get it. And you want to sustain it and reduce injury uh, possibility and stuff like that. But if you just want to run a marathon, you can just run a marathon. Just fucking run it, man. Which is what we did. And in my head, I blew I exactly what you said earlier. You build it up in your mind to be such a massive thing. And I think I felt that with the 100K yesterday. I think I felt how big that was. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. big. So, like, it is huge, right? Is so, big. like, even 10K in, I'm like, fuck, man. Like, 90 left. I'm hurting already. Like, I'm hurting already. And I can't, you know, when you go for a run and the first third of the run, you're like, oh, God, this is shit. Why am I doing this? Yeah. Let me just stop. A whole internal dialogue is like, I want to turn around. What's the point? Go home. You can do this tomorrow. Whatever. I felt like that the first. I don't know. The whole way. The whole way. Yeah, like, there was pretty not, much. There's like, not one same. point I got in it and I was like, oh, I'm in a flow state here. It's pretty good. I can sustain this whole thing with shit. Didn't find the flow no, at, all. Well, at all. At all. I think we ran through for 30k. 30k a month. 30k a month. So you're not finding that, like, what we really wanted was 30k of finding your flow yeah. and then go into the mud, maybe. So, like, yeah, it was an expedition more than an more than like an exercise. Yeah, I think. and navigation. You got to keep an eye out for the. We got lost. I mean, sign the marshes, yeah. We got yeah, we got lost a couple of times, but like, now it's an intro and like I think. It's brought on more for me to do what the fuck I want to do. Mm -hmm. So like I say now, I've been wanting to do. I want to do it. I always said for about how old am I now? For about twelve years, I said I want to do a ski base jump, mm -hmm. and I've never done anything other than ski. To get me towards that, so I was like, "Fuck, all right." And you booked something. Let's right? talk, man. Booked it. I booked it. I woke up at four in the morning yesterday, and I booked it. How cool is that? Because it's always available there. Yeah. And now you decided to just. And do I just it. thought, if I'm not doing hundred k, why am I not doing that? So I booked it. I got the skydiving course, fifteenth Jan. I think that sets the bar, doesn't it? Doing something like yesterday, even just running the marathons this year, like like you said, people will never do that. People will never do it. And you've done it in like last well, month. 
What did you say? I thought I might run a marathon when I was like mid thirties yeah, or something. Yeah, I thought it's like, like a life I thought, achievement. I thought forties, fifties when I've like you know stopped playing like sport and maybe more individual gym based stuff. I thought you know maybe that's something I'll get into one day. Oh, it's a life goal to run a marathon. Yeah. But you yesterday you um, you started in a dark place, didn't you? You yeah. were to be fair. I was a bit worried about like you were quiet all last week. Like the whole week you were quiet. On the day you were quiet, like do you know what I mean? Like I, mean, I could just, I could just sense that, you can sense and I was energy. constantly worried the whole time I was going to turn around and Sam weren't going to be there on the floor or something. Yeah, like do you know what I mean? Or or I'd go to the next one and you're in the van with Ian. Like I, I was debating that. My I was heart. constantly what I thought, not worried, but I yeah. thought there's something about Sam and like for me to watch you do that whole thing <laughs> with that energy, I was like, wow. Do you know what I mean? Mate, I've been, listen- I've been listening to David Goggins, right, and watching a lot of his stuff, and this- I finished his audio book like a couple of weeks ago, and the-, the stuff he talks about when you push your body to the absolute limit, like, for me, that was it. Like, that was me pushing my body into something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really train for running. Yeah. I've been last month. I'm not naturally suited to it with, like, my biomechanics and my, my sort of um, build and things like that. So I just feel like I'm already up against it here. Like, that's similar to what you're saying. You're not a runner. And I feel like... Well, who am I? Who am I to be doing this? Like, like trying this out. I'm not in my own domain here. And I thought I was listening to Goggins. And he's saying that when you get to that point, like you hear about the wall and all this sort of shit, and it's like you're going to come up with all your insecurities, all your inadequacies, all your past failures, all that internal dialogue of like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Just give up. What's the point? Who are you trying to prove this to? Yeah. And you, then you start getting philosophical about why am I actually doing this? Like, what am I trying to prove? Am I just yeah. trying to do this with my mates who've said this? Like, why were you doing it? Um. To test myself, because to, to, I know the version of me, the other side of the experience will be like, "Fuck, man, you've tested yourself, and you find out more about yourself." And I've heard this in theory, and if I'm like, "Fuck," so the whole build up to the week, I'm like impending doom. I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck, it's it's happening." Like Saturday the day, all week did nothing but go to a sauna every day. I was like, went to the gym. Some people are like, "Hey, training today?" I'm like, "No, just go <laughs> yeah. to sauna." Yeah. But like, even if they ask me, I'm like, "Don't worry, like I'm not going to go into it." <laughs> Oh, I'm running a hundred k on Saturday. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to. I didn't want to tell anybody in case I didn't do it. So I was just sort of like, even on Saturday morning traveling there, I thought, right, a few of the guys have said about about it online. I thought, right, let me just a couple of stories just to sort of initiate the day that I'm doing something. I thought, fuck, I've done it now. Like, I've got to do this. And uh, yeah, so basically, listening to Goggins, he was saying about his story is really tragic and stuff. And I thought, right, he's faced all of his insecurities and none of this bullshit of like trying to promote yourself as someone you're not actual inferior memories all this sort of stuff i even had this memory i said to lou it's mad that when i was really starting to struggle and i was thinking god should i just stop at the next stop and say to ian which is tom's dad who, who amazingly supported throughout the whole day with his van and stopped off for us all the time and stuff which was amazing um i even thought to myself do i just get in the van with him and just watch the rest do it because i'm really struggling it's like 20k in i'm thinking Fuck, how am I going to do 100? <laughs> in my head, it's just this massive mountain. And I thought to myself, oh, God, I really want to just stop with Ian, but I don't want to then sit with... Like, the novelty of sitting with Ian for 15 minutes would have been great. And after that, the rest of the day, I'm like, what have I done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking I've got to sustain this and do it. I had this memory of skiing when I was, like, 13 with my dad. And I was on top of a red. It was, we'd been skiing all day. It was, like, 5 p.m. or something. And you know, obviously, when you're skiing, you're on one leg, then the other as you, as you turn. As you come as you come down and i remember my like right i'm um, left footed in football so my left quad is a lot stronger than my right quad i remember turning and on my right i just couldn't sustain it because i was knackered at the end of the day and my dad was getting really frustrated at me like because he's not very he's, he's been got much patience and stuff and he was getting really frustrated at me but i just couldn't like i didn't have the energy to get down and i got really wound up and like upset because he was putting pressure on me and i couldn't do it and i felt like a failure and that kept coming up in the run and i was thinking fuck like but this is what Goggins was talking about. All this yeah, stuff is going to come up, up and I'm running and people are like, and I'm behind everyone, like keep, keep keeping a slow pace. And I can see everyone ahead of me. I'm thinking, fuck, they're all feeling all right. I'm not feeling all right. Everyone knows I'm at the back. So it's highlighting that I'm struggling. And all this stuff is like, yeah, you're struggling, Sam. Just give up. And I'm like, fuck you, no. And I'm just like, I've got to keep going. And then people will turn around. You, you turn around and came back to sub, like run with me. I'm like, no, man. I'm like, don't highlight it. So I appreciate it. I was like, thank you, what a legend for coming back. But I'm thinking, man, seriously, I don't want to affect your day. You go and run. And it, it was just really hard to sort of, um, it was a mental game the whole time. And it got to a point where I was walking a bit on my own. And I was thinking, 
what am I learning from this? Like, what am I getting out of it? Like, what yeah. am I actually doing this for? I've got to do the whole hundred. My phone was out of battery. I had no idea how far we'd gone. Tom was right at the front. I haven't seen Tom in like three hours or something. And I was just thinking, I've got to finish it. Got to finish it. All the details were just whatever throughout the day. I just got to get through it. And I know that the time will pass if I just keep moving throughout the entire day, we'll get to the end. And I think the takeaway from it is that I knew that I was going to come into come into contact with all the bullshit inner thoughts of like my childhood and teenage years of like not feeling good enough and all sort of stuff. And it was just sort of like, fuck you to that. And just being like, I will get to the end of this. But we didn't get to the end of it. <laughs> no, we got to 90, 93K or whatever. And it got to the point where I genuinely think that it was probably gonna do me more damage to continue walking. So I felt like I nearly broke my right foot, like just walking on it. How did you test yourself though? Yeah, massively. Go well, so well, was yeah. that not the goal? Yeah, yeah that's what we said. So, we, we were like, we've all gone to the place we wanted to go to. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, well, we wanted to go to Cromer, but like... <laughs> <laughs> the only person that wanted to go to Cromer yesterday, yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, we'd, we were all in the same place. Like, and I think we all sustained that for a good 10K as well. Like, I could it happen comfortably and still been kind of happy with myself stopping 10, 15K before we did. Yeah, 100%. We, like, do you know what I mean? I was in pain. In like yeah. Irvingham area. Like. Yeah, we were, like, we were like, what's your pain level? We were like, yeah, about eight and a half, nine. You're like, yeah, that's, like, that's painful. Mm -hmm. But we kept going and going. But yet, for me, like, I did, I was expecting more things to come up for me, personally. Yeah. You, mate, you didn't, you were amazing. I was actually, like, shocked by how well you pace yourself and how much energy you had to just continue going even throughout it yeah until the point we like we like broken yeah i think at the end if there was like a medical professional there like a doctor or someone or a physio i reckon they would have said at least 15 kilometers prior to where we got to in the end saying it's actually counterproductive for you to do this now yeah. from a physical point of view yeah, you're actually yeah. damaging you're probably yourself into your damage so yeah. yeah that's mad to see how like how you consistent more, yeah how mad it was for us to be so persistent to push through. And like I said, it's annoying we didn't get the 100. And in my head, I'm the same. I'm like, oh, I didn't, well, I didn't really technically do it. And then I think to myself, oh, fuck, like, because I've just kept walking. But I know that I've pushed myself to the absolute limit. And I don't need to prove that to anybody else because I already know that. Because I want to give up at like 20k. Yeah. Like, it's a personal thing. Yeah, massively. But yeah, I, I thought I'd get more insecurities in that come up. Mm. I really did. I thought it would take what me to a dark up? place. What was the biggest insecurity that came up? That I'm not really a runner. So I was walking. Just imposter syndrome. When did you become a runner? That's what it was. Do you know? I just thought I'm not running. I'm not running 100k. I haven't run 100k. Mm. Even even when we were 30k in, I was like, we've not run up. We're not going to run 100k. Because we were 30k in. We, were, we must have walked. You can't run through that, in, mud. Through that mud. Like yeah. some of that, you're either going to... Because you're worried about slipping and like I'm worried about my hip flex going on my yeah. broad. It was bad. So like I was thinking just like I'm not really a runner. Like, this is not really like I'm, I'm, I'm not really a I, I can't say I've run 100k. Yeah in your head it's not a 100 was, kilometer straight run. Yeah. yeah. And that was probably the biggest thing really. It was funny like like the positive comes out of it for me is that like I think I realised how good of a mindset I have, really. Like I've all, I've, I know I'm not too bad, but like compared to the average person, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. That sounds. Um, what's the word? Pretentious. But yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like I know not anyone in particular, but like the, but, an average person off the street. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I was just like, I just got to walk, man. Like, I, I don't, don't really know what else to say or think, and that's all I kept thinking. I was like, I'd like to know how far is left, because like Sam said. We had no phone, no, well, we had phone, but no Strava. Mm -hmm. I didn't have my watch on. It was counting steps, yeah. that's it. I did switch it onto a run mode. Yeah. No concept of distance at all. So you don't know when your next stop is. You don't know how far you've done. So mentally, that's quite difficult. But other than that, I was just like, just got to be done. Like, like, mm -hmm. And that was it, really. And, and I remember thinking, like, I was walking at the front for quite a bit near the end, weren't mm -hmm. I? I said at the front, only because I had my torch and you guys were behind me. Um, on and the I, side of the main road. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, not really, well, none of us are really talking, but like, I was just thinking, I just gotta walk. Like, whoa. I don't know what else to One say or think. Other, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you just gotta Move. just gotta keep moving. But then, like I said, we stopped on that little crossroads. You, We'd stopped very briefly before, hadn't we, for a piss? Mm -hmm. But that time we stopped, and I couldn't move. 
I, I just couldn't move. It's the stop and that, well, ironically stops you. Yeah, I, I hobbled to the to the um, road sign, leant up against it, then we were waiting and Sophie came and picked us up. And um, when she pulled up, I went to move and I was like, I can't move my leg. I, I couldn't move my leg, but I, obviously I did eventually, but like, it was, you know, when, like in your head, you, you trigger yourself to move your foot and it, it just it's moves. Instant, yeah. Where like that last night, it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, stuck, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 I just put a bit more effort in. But um, yeah, it just, it just really made me think that actually, I probably don't do myself justice. Like how I, sometimes I reflected a little bit about maybe how I talk and how I am, how that might be perceived by other people in the sense, like, to me, it's like, you fucking get on and do it. Mm -hmm. Like, like what, what, what do you want to, but to other people, that might sound a bit funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you don't think like that, then that might sound like you're a bit fucking, I, I don't know. Do I, you know what I, mean? I can like, relate, because Louis kept asking me, he kept coming back to me and was like, how you doing, man? How you doing? Just checking in on me. And I'm like, I don't really have an answer for you. I feel like shit. Yeah. I'm hurting everywhere and this is horrible and this is the hardest thing we've ever done. But we're doing 100k, so I've just got to keep doing it. Yeah. That's it. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> I can give you like details and say how shit I feel and stuff, but other than that, it's like, yep, yeah, still feel the same as I did like three hours ago. But we're still going. <laughs> Five hours yeah, ago, yeah. seven hours yeah. ago, still going. ten hours ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it's an amazing experience to share together as well, yeah. to be honest. Under like, stars and stuff, there's I, that moment. Do you know what, stars, I was down in the bath last night and I had a tear in my eye, man. I thought I was going to cry when I was at Chroma, but I was just sitting there, I was like, man, like, it's not very often you have a genuine, genuine shared experience. Like, a genuine shared experience, because yeah. everything's so subjective. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if we went on a roller coaster, like, oh, we went on a roller coaster together. No, I might have been bored as fuck because it's not that good, and you I might have found it, it the yeah. most amazing thing in the mm -hmm. world. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's not a shared experience. When you are all broken, you, broken. Like imagine, ima like yeah, in the army, they yeah. have similar experiences, don't they? Where they grow that kind that of brotherhood that, and stuff. That's yeah. just Similar how it felt. bodybuilding shows, and actually, you actually get to that stage, and you're behind there, and people have gone through the diet, they've gone through all their cardio sessions, and you can just see in their face is completely drawn in that they're actually like standing up, getting a head rush, and just you're actually posing on stage and nearly blacking out, like. The dedication yeah like of that journey you're thinking that yeah like this is your story to get there mm. and it's like a shared experience there it's hard to like even try and think what other shared experiences because when i've ever done any endurance things like, it sounds like shit compared to yours when it comes to like further start when it's 22 miles when i training for a marathon and my achilles basically snapped but i remember the pain in doing that and then like my longest bike ride was like 50 miles and I was actually riding with a pro cyclist and he was just like, this is a piece of piss. And he's used to doing 100, 150 miles normally. I'm like, yeah, I'm struggling like, right here. Like, I need to stop. Um, and like to the point where literally you couldn't actually pick your leg over, like, you're clipped in with your cleats. Yeah. You're trying that and you actually can't get your leg over the bar. And, but that wasn't any way of shared experience at all because he was struggling yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and i'm just like i can't keep up with you yeah and just go is there any other shared experiences like that can we think of any obviously like, like I just being there's probably more, more together yeah. there's probably yeah. more than you yeah. think yeah. really it's just that they're not you need to common. experience them to find out about yeah them. like i can't yeah. say i've had a shared a shared experience like that i don't believe to but also it's like because it's pain yeah like with war like, yeah. like imagine if we'd all been shot in the leg mm -hmm. you're like I know what the fuck you're going through. Really? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We were all at that same point where I've been, I felt like I've been shot in the leg. Like, mm. I was fucked. You imagine it would be, yeah. And I know that you boys, like, I, I know that, like, it's a, yeah, it's a bonding experience, man. It's, um, it was suffering. Yeah. I was, I was genuinely suffering for the last 20k. Easy. Easy. Do you know what else was funny, right? We were walking through, like, the villages, yeah. and we were saying about how psychedelic this whole experience is. Because, like, imagine you've just run, like, 70k, right? And you're now at North Walsham, which is just shy of 70k. We're walking through to North Walsham. You're in the village, yeah? People around, and they're going buying the their baubles, and, and they're going getting some meat from the butchers. Yeah. And you're like, 
I am nearly dead. Like, I'm fucked now. Yeah. Like, my legs are fucked. I'm hobbling through the town. And you're like, you feel so detached from, yeah. like, from, like, reality. It's quite psychedelic from that perspective. It's like you're tripping. You're, like, walking through it and just, just moving past everybody. Yeah. They're all just sort of going about their daily lives. And you're thinking, you have no idea what I'm in right now. And another thing is, is that you don't know how long this is going to go yeah. on. Same as a trip. Like, yeah. you don't know when yeah. you're going to come out. You're so stuck you're like, in this experience. And I don't even like, know how many kilometres I've done. I don't know where. We got, to point, we got to the point at the end of the day and we were just saying, like, I can't even remember my life outside of this experience. No. Like, I can't remember what my name. I can't remember, like, what I do for a job. I can't remember anything. Louis was hallucinating. Yeah. He thought he saw a, hu- a, a man and that was a fucking road sign. And shit. Like, <laughs> you, get, you get to that point and that's how drained you are, man. So, Your body's eating itself. Yeah. You can't, you can't explain it. And, like, and I think now as well... It gives you a newfound respect for endurance. Oh, yes. When you see people go 200 miles. Goggins, yeah. Miles. So what's that? You don't want 320k. Reason, you know? Yeah. Three times. Like 48 hours or whatever it is, that sort of stuff, like overnight. Wow. Like newfound, newfound admiration for, 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 for what they do. Well, I think it's cool about human beings as well. So you get these people, these select few. When I say few, it's not a few, it's actually fucking thousands, obviously, or millions, yeah. even millions, but... Percentage-wise. Percentage-wise, yeah. yeah. The select few of the people that are like, literally pushing the human capabilities like to the absolute limits. And just see, I think human beings are so creative and innovative and builders and strivers, and that's what we continuously do at our best, is that you do get these people that choose the physical... Um, the physical... Um, uh, sports activities and they just see see how far the human being can go and I think that's just like a, a personal version of that yesterday because people are like why, why do you do it there's no like if it was like a charity incentive or anything like that it wasn't really anything it was no, just, just, just a random Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. we yeah. just booked a day yeah. but like the thing is as well I think for me is that I don't know anyone who's done that like what we done yesterday mm. is nothing like it generally is, it's, it's generally world, yeah. nothing. We're never gonna like be famous for it. You know, yeah. like, it's not yeah. like you yeah. broke any ground. No. Like it's just a fucking run. Loads Anyone of people do, do it. Yeah. Really, yeah. it's just that we're not runners who just went and done it. Yeah. But also, like, yeah, I don't. There's no one around. There's no events around. There's no like. For example, say you lived in a town where there was an ultra event every year. Yeah. And that was your part of your reality. That would kind of seem like. Do you know what I mean? You'd know that people do that. I'm not where, exposed to that anyway. Yeah. No. Like, six months ago you might not have been even known about it. Like, yeah. yeah. And, 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 but to have people just do it who you know, I bet that was us, but I mean, like, people we know, like, to go, like, fuck. Like, I think, like, like, like yeah. also the difference as well, like, because I've come from that endurance world, like, nutrition-wise, and working with those athletes, I've seen the amount of training that these guys do. So when you say about being exposed to it, like, yes, I have been exposed. I've trained people to do that nutrition-wise. Mm-hmm. You've been more exposed to it than that. Yeah. I've also seen their amount of training compared to your amount of training. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, 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 like, yeah. No, no, yeah. but that like puts that feet like in, in I, the I perspective. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You, that that gives like, you a perspective yeah, that, that other people probably don't have yeah. because they'll think, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 On a scale of one to ten, how fucking mental was it? We just did that. About fifty. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't prepare really at all. No, but it, the, the mind's been preparing for it. Was it? Um, was it an optimal diet of naked bars? skills i've uh, honestly i've seen people like go on nothing for 100 miles yeah. right or 100 mile rides and stuff because it's the mental side yeah mm. it's like yeah you could have optimal but what actually is optimal depending on the specific day the temperature the wind speed so the altitude many, yeah, all that yeah, stuff yeah. like it can change like, and then like there's more water on in in the mud so it's harder to get through than if it was dry all, that stuff all those different things. Yeah. yeah. You know another thing about that? You know, we talk about how we build it up in our minds to be such a big thing and that almost prevents us from doing stuff. I find that with the nutrition stuff. The first couple of the first marathon I did, obviously I ate a lot of food on the day. But in my head I'm like, God, should I have like eaten? It doesn't more? have to be complicated. Yeah, but yeah. in my head, because I didn't go into it like that, it's almost like it made it easier. Yeah. So if I added another layer of oh I've got to think about all the nutrition, have I had enough carbohydrates? That would have been added more pressure, more... And it's another doubt that allows you to creep in. So oh, this is, my nutrition this is wasn't I, right. Yeah, this is what it, yeah. I said to you Louis the other day, these right? these carbs for this hour and all that sort We of were thing. here on, was it Wednesday? Me, Louis and Bobby done a little workout in the gym, yeah? Mm. Just nothing major, a few rounds on the bag, bit of skipping, right? Yeah. yeah. And then Louis, we all came in here, Louis was like, I'm going to do a circuit. And I was like, do you need to do this circuit? And I was like, 
because I don't want to give myself an excuse on the day and go, that, that'll creep in. I'd be going, I did that oh, circuit. if I didn't do that circuit, I'd probably feel a bit better now. And that and that would that would come up. I'm I'm sure it would. So that's do you know what I mean? That's why this Same is the nutrition. It's like that's just another excuse. But or, also like planning stuff. So you've got that the business event coming up at the end of the, like yeah. the monthly thing. I um I messaged the we so Tom's cousin because you said about ergo and whatever. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I don't know whether I should do it because like I know where my body is at the moment. I'm going through this health protocol and it's like not smashing workouts. It's using exercise as like mindset time. Like not hitting PBs in the gym and not doing like ridiculously hit stuff and I'm like, but it's only once a month. She's like, yeah, it is only once. Like it doesn't have to be like, and you don't have to go to the full intensity. But the reason I'm thinking that is because I know exactly where my body is at from all the scientific stuff. If I didn't know that, mm. I would have just done it. So as much as it's a gift to know that knowledge, it's also a curse in the sense that that's something yeah. that potentially look like, imagine if it goggins, hold you back imagine if goggins yeah. went oh no actually there's i know the science behind this and i probably shouldn't do these right like do you know what i mean imagine imagine if he, he, he knew yeah. his leg was broken all through it he found out yeah, yeah, like, he yeah, knew yeah. he had that like splintered shin or whatever it was yeah like that's got to fuck you up for sure yeah 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 like, he would have just felt pain he would have just felt pain and probably been told and that'd be there yeah so, oh, the mind is so amazing man and i like there's one thing uh, joe dispenser mm when he was like, so all these, like for example, perfect, perfect current event, vaccine, Pfizer, they do tests. They literally test the placebo. Yeah. Yep. They give people a fake vaccine to see if they, like, they test for that, but yet won't explore more possibilities of a real placebo, like to go, well, actually, if, if we're thinking, if we're testing that the brain can heal itself, why can't the brain heal itself and why don't we do that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's, like, a, that's a perfect example. Like, when you look at this current situation of lockdowns, of COVID and all this sort of stuff, like me studying the immune system, knowing about immunology and all that sort of stuff, that I'm like, I don't want to know about this stuff right now because like, it would be easier to just be able to accept it. Yeah. Like, and it gets an extra yeah. level of yeah. stress. Let's go in like, a bit more on yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's like the, the crazy thing that I've noticed that like, when you see people announcing things and you're like, well, that's what a virus does. Like, that's what all the other viruses end up mutating and stuff. Like how oh, yeah, the most virus. viruses mutate, yeah. but it's what they do in order to survive. And they go into potentially weaker strains, which are easier to get, like the common cold. Mm. Some so people still what's die. The word? Like they're more contagious, but less, you have, you have that graph, don't you? It's like contagious and deadly. Yeah. So they become more contagious, but less deadly. Yeah. 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 Uh, and you think, well, if I didn't know about this stuff, I would, I'd be shit scared about a muta mutated virus right now. But I'm more pissed off about how the government have said this and that. So, and you, you just look at things and then you say, like, even things like looking at numbers and like diving into those numbers, like you could do for like, a, a run, you're like, I need this amount of carbs and that sort of thing. I'm looking at numbers when it comes to a virus and saying, so zero people have recovered from it. Why is there not a recovery rate? Yeah, like, why, yeah, why is there not even one person they've said Two recovered? million yeah. Yeah. infected that. Um, all that recovery. sort of stuff. And, and yeah, it's it's just, would it be better? Like, in your your eyes, like, you know about nutrition. You you, you were going to be a sportsman, like, with the football stuff. So you would have looked into nutrition and stuff. You, you're into nutrition as mm -hmm. well. Like, you know about this stuff. But if you look deeper into something, like, I need to have this exact amount of calories per hour for 15 hours, okay then, but what about my digestive tract? How much can that physically take per day? Yeah, yeah. Shit, I'm actually gonna be burning more calories than my uh, GI tract can actually take. Like, you think, wow, that actually shits you up a lot more. It's fractal. So it would've been better going into that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, because you'd, you'd go in, you'd be like, oh, well, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Where's yeah. the end? Exactly, and then you, like, rather than, it's been, like, you didn't necessarily enjoy the experience, you probably did enjoy the experience, but rather than just enjoying what actually comes and then dealing with it, you then got that extra added stress. Extra stress, yeah. yeah. Well, this I think that's a good point. Like, I I didn't feel any of that at all. No real stress. I think we were in all fairly high spirits most of the way. Really, mm. there was let's say towards the end, it was like, yeah, I'm not having a good time, but yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to pretend I'm having a good time. Like, the more variables you add into it, like if you'd had have ten gels, one gel an hour, and you dropped one gel, you'd be like, um, oh, and you dropped God. your spare gel. You're like, yeah, Shit. yeah. I think I read a message from Tom on one of the group chats and said something like sixty grams of carbs per each hour, and I was thinking. Oh, I don't. I don't want to even think of, think about that. Probably, probably right. 
But if I start thinking like that, that just adds more complexity to the experience. Yeah. I think the best time, the best experience I have of anything like that, whether it's a physical pursuit or if it's just like any task, is like letting go of the magnitude of it. Yeah. And just almost like, even when I play football, I play football, if I build it up and I think about it too much and I put pressure on myself, always, always don't enjoy it. Never enjoy it or I play shit. And as soon as I like, sometimes if I'm busy and then suddenly it'll be like, I don't know, Friday night, and I'll go, oh fuck yeah, I'm playing football tomorrow. But then I, I don't think about it and I turn up and I just it play. Is. Flow state. Yeah, well, I, I, one example. So when I, I done the first year of my masters and then it just wasn't for me. But in that year we were talking about endurance athletes and there was a question that came up about endurance cyclists. I just worked with a guy, I'd done the Tour de France and was going through the World Cycling Champ Road, Road World Cycling Championships. And he said, you can only have this amount of carbs in there. They need to have this amount, that amount. And I said, well, no, this is what he used. I right, came second in, in the team one, came like 14th in one of the actual stages of the Tour de France. And you think, these are, at, and then I was like, got their training peaks there. I said, no, this is the calories he burned with all this data and stuff. Right, and the, the lecture was really cool for it, but it's just, that's what science says you can do. But we can kind of blur those boundaries a little bit because everyone is individual. Be flexible. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, a funny thing. Like, same with, like, with nutrition. Like, um, don't get me wrong, like I say, there's, I, I, it kind, it kind of makes sense to me yeah. that a plant-based diet would be healthy. Mm. It just makes sense. Mm -hmm. Going off so many things from an evolutionary perspective kind of makes sense. Um, from what we're told, like, there's that saying is, I'm all, when I was younger, I was told to eat more greens and vegetables yeah. now all I eat is greens and vegetables and everyone's worried about what I eat like do you know what I mean like it's that like it's their own insecurities with it but I think I think for me the prop this year has made me think like this but like I don't know what's fucking real you looking at a graph or some tables of science so we call it science you ain't done it no we said, you, said you, that yeah, before we said you can't come to me and go and show me a graph and I'm gonna go Cool, like, does yeah. it, it means nothing to me because I, I haven't done it, you haven't done it. But even the one that I did do for my dissertation, you didn't do it. I, I didn't do it. Yeah. yeah, so only I know that. Exactly. And, and even the person that I was, I was we were doing um, blood oxygen levels, I can't remember what the exact thing was, but even the person whose blood I was taking doesn't know because I could have written something different down. Yeah. There's so many different, so many things. So but you I know think, how you feel. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think it's all about how you feel. And like, my diet, shit i don't eat i'm not a healthy plant-based guy like do you know i do eat chocolate every now and again like dairy chocolate but i'm yeah not that often but like but i eat pretty shit i don't eat healthy do you know what i mean i'll go and buy a pack of the fucking corn picnic eggs the vegan one and i'll sit and munch them and i'll eat i don't eat well but i feel great all the fucking time i just went out and run 90k the yesterday. Only time. Like, do you know you what i mean great today. the only time <laughs> i feel yeah. I, do you know what i you feel, feel as someone that felt great running I'm, 90k I'm limp, would feel i'm limping a little bit yeah, yeah. but jesus christ yeah. like do you know what i mean like what you, just, the what you just said there's people that go so in like we're talking about the science and stuff some people go so into stuff that they'll eat stuff and they'll be like yeah they've got so in on nutrition right and the and the benefits are there yeah, they won't, and they'll still be doing all the right things based on science, and they'll feel like, still feel like shit most of the time. Whereas you've just said you feel great all the time. However, the only time it would come into play is if, like, forty years from now, you start getting health defects. There we go. Like yeah, that. Yeah, when you're yeah. going, oh, we, we don't know like, what a health now There's is certain doing. things yeah. inside us that you don't feel, yeah, you don't but see. you don't feel kidney failure. Yeah, of course. No, but you see, like, it actually, you don't feel autoimmune at the time. And one of the things that I've, I've looked deeper into with brain function, when we look at brain fog and we look at memory loss even just like forgetting where you put your keys or something like that. Uh, these are all signs of like early onset, potentially of Alzheimer's or things going on in the brain information wise. One of the frustrations I've had is like looking into um, dealing with a client who's got epilepsy, had serious migraines and serious autoimmune conditions is seeing how the health service has essentially failed her. Look at her body in separate different systems and like not actually diagnosing some of the autoimmune conditions because of the fact that they wait until tissue is actually physically damaged before they'll say it's autoimmune. Not mm -hmm. say, oh, you've got all these symptoms of it, yeah. like, and now we can do something about no it. No preventative measures. Um, and it, yeah. it's like, for, we look at health as a now. Like, I feel good now, but is what I'm doing now going to make me feel good in 10 years? And yeah. then can we do as much about it in 10 years as if we actually if made we something about it now? 100%. Like, I, feel, you know I feel, feel good. Like? 
I'm never ill. I'm fit. I've got a good engine. Like, I, my, my skin's not bad. Like, I don't feel bad, but I'm very, very aware I've got no idea. No idea. Inside. No idea. Inside, I've got no idea. Yeah. So, I, in my head, I'm like, I need, I do know that I need, but at the same time, like, yeah, I feel good, man. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, but it's also, the hardest thing for sorry, man. It's the hardest thing for humans to think about like investment for the future because people like the vast majority, like eight out of yeah, like, people, grab the marshmallow now rather than wait until yeah, two in the future and spend their paycheck on online shopping rather than in, investing it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's such a hard thing to delay instant gratification across humans. There's little books on it and stuff, and people yeah. want to know. It's hard though, yeah. man. Do you know what I mean, it's I'm exactly terrible. Like, like, instant come, come gratification. Back to that stuff. Like going to the nutrition first, I've come back to that with like my mindset has, has been, and it's actually got me into debt with doing that. Yeah. But with nutrition, that there's a certain amount where if we're going a hundred percent perfect on nutrition, mm. it stresses us out more. And if stress yes. is one of the reasons that has caused more inflammation, is that going to then just like fight fire with fire? So at what point is like good nutrition and the percentage of good nutrition actually going to be better for lowering stress? But it's when you say about um, looking at like future. Like, and doing things for the future, then I use like my dad dying at 47, mm-hmm. like seemingly healthy, not overweight, but in a stressful job, like just having a migraine then turn into a stroke. Like Monday fine, Saturday he's dead, like, which is yeah. fucked up. Mm-hmm. But then, um, like that also mindset, like, oh, I might not be here tomorrow, fuck it, I'll go and borrow some more money to get this. Yeah. So I can enjoy it. Mm. Uh, but then, I, then you are there, like, oh, now I've got to deal with it. And, yeah. and then you're like, oh, yeah. fuck, I'm 130 years old, bro. I've still got to pay this fucking thing yeah. up. There is two sides to that argument, yeah. isn't there? Because, which yeah, one do we like, get we, to? Yeah, yeah. Do we get don't to? know. What, like, we could go out here, go out on the road and just get smashed up in a car. It's a horrible thing to think of. Oh, yeah. I should have had more but, fun before yeah. it happened. You should have finished yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're laying yeah. in hospital, you say, I should have just got a huge load over last week and just fucked it all up. Yeah, exactly. But... Like, we don't know that, so at what point have we actually got to be human about it and actually be to, to the, what's the word? Or actually be an adult. I think, what what like, point do we actually start adulting? Oh, yeah. mate, I, I, I happily admit, right, and then, I've, we've been talking about it a lot recently, obviously seeing Sophie over the last sort of six months or whatever, um, getting a little bit more serious, start talking about stuff, and like, I live with my mum and dad again at the minute and stuff, and like, I'm fully happy admitting I do not want to grow up, mm-hmm. ever. Like, I do not want to do anything that's, like, people, I think we're tricked into calling it adulting. Actually, it's just matrix. Yeah. Sort of here. Compliant. We've had compliant. Compliant. Yeah. Oh, to five oh, to adult, different adult. Yeah. So I don't want to pay, yeah, I'll pay bills, I'll pay that. Don't tell me. I want, like, a life PA that just deals with all that. Like, I don't want to deal with anything in the matrix that makes me, reminds me that I am controlled every step that I take. I just don't want to deal with it. Don't want to deal with it at all. I do not want an adult one iota. Yeah. And if that's what adulting is, I'll stay a fucking child, man. Like, keep me out of it. I do not want to know. So like, I want to get to a point where I've got the abundance where I don't have to deal with that. Like, if yeah. you, I have a set amount of money in my bank. Maybe not yet, but she can like just deal with it. Like, here's the fucking bill. I don't care. Here's it. This is for this. Don't even tell me about it. People live that way as well. That's what's cool. Yes. Yeah. Lots of people must live that way. Hundred yeah. percent. I don't want to deal with it. I don't. I don't want to adult. I don't just, want to grow up. It's essentially, just passing struggle. the admin off, isn't it? It's like, all right, call yeah. admin in my job. Fuck that. Someone. I'd rather someone else took care of the admin. But again, we call it adulting, don't we? When you got to be an adult and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. No, I'm cool, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you yeah, just said that to me last year, this time last year, I'd have been like, yeah, great. But when are you going to actually like have more routine with your job? Like, no. Well, if a client wants me to go over to America next week, I'll book a flight and go over to America next week. Yeah. Um, and then like this year, I'm like thinking fuck's sake, having your best year ever, and now like we've had these different restrictions and you're not trying to be a victim, and then you're thinking, like, it's had to be so restrictive, I can't live that normal life at the moment. Difficult time, man. Yeah. Difficult time. Crazy, like, but then you want to have more of a child. But, like, going back to you, is that, like, for, for people like us, people like us, but, like, like us adults, no, knowing or having an awareness of what, what they call a victim's mentality and stuff like that, it's difficult when you're in a situation where you are out of control. Yeah. yeah. It's different. Like a victim's mentality could also, it's really built around the sense of, well, you're not working hard enough or you're yeah. not like You're not taking, fair, you're not taking responsibility. Great, yeah, which is yeah. a great thing, right? But when you're like, there's a global pandemic, the government are forced on lockdown, like yeah. you are out of control. Yeah. Like, yeah. Call it a victim's mentality. Fuck it. Stick that label on me if you want. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, 
But it is difficult because usually we would think the other way and we'd be yeah. going like, right, what can we do? What can we... And actually, everywhere you look, you're like, oh no, oh no, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. And it's like, no, yeah, it's just yeah. I think we're shit. entitled to course. People are entitled to, to claim that victim's mentality during this if they want to. Yeah. People, people have had their whole anomaly life, of a year. People have had their whole really, livelihood yeah. completely taken away. Businesses destroyed. Everything. People are, are they're a victim. It's like shooting someone and then being like, oh, you can't say you're a victim. Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking hard. Yeah. I'm bleeding him, I think. In, in it's strange, right? That like this year, again, has the whole year has been almost psychedelic. Like, you couldn't quite it. Can all. you imagine Waking there's up someone. And being like, oh, can you imagine there's someone who's lost their business, yeah. might be losing their home, and suicidal? Yeah. But, and also, not only that, petrified of a virus. Yeah. Yeah. Petrified. Like, genuinely scared. Of, like, can you imagine what that person's reality is like? Yeah. Yeah. And then here, here we are, or we, I'll speak for myself, don't give a shit. Have, like, carried on. Like, I don't do a lot, so it doesn't really affect me. Mm. I don't do it. Like, I'm, I'm not one. Yeah. I, don't, I don't go to restaurants. I don't really go out. So it doesn't. I'm not really that bothered in general. Mm. Um, construction was allowed to carry up, so it's not really been. I saw a story. I think it was like on Twitter. It was a, a guy. You know, when somebody dies, they they, they circulate a picture of the person in the story. Yeah. Um, it was a. It, obviously, this is just one example, but it's really sad when you see these stories. It's like one guy, um, lost his job because of COVID, and then he just went for a breakup with his girlfriend. Oh, it's a long one. Yeah, and he then he couldn't. It was like the mum tweeted us. Yeah. Thing. So lost his job, had a breakup, but then couldn't see his friends. So he's got no support network, which you would if you went through anything like that emotionally. Even just losing your job, losing your job and ending a relationship or getting uh, getting broken up with or something like that, and then not even be able to connect with other people to help you support through that. Then he took his own life. He's like twenty five. It's like so this is yeah. one person, and you don't hear about that unless you see that tweet and you think of all the people. And I think that's the power of like growth society yeah. and stuff of getting people to be able to talk and share about their experiences rather than isolate it's like oh there's a virus that's going to kill you so you need to be isolated and then people are dying from being isolated yeah <laughs> yeah but the bro the even the whatsapp chat yeah good man mm. just like, to be able to like, have I a put place. That big message out this morning right? yeah. i was like i bet you felt yeah, better yeah, just yeah, putting it out there just putting it out there yeah, yeah. Uh, i got back from the gym and i was like there was hancock other than the gym like I want to throw this dumbbell at the TV. <laughs> not going to work. But it's been doing yeah, cool. Yeah. But, it's um, a statement. Yeah, yeah it's even power. Yeah. Like from the 20 foot away or something. But um, And then you get back and you're like, yeah, I'm, I am actually really pissed off and like really low about it. But then writing about it and somewhere to actually put like, so we've got Special. everyone in this group and you know it's not going to be, well, stop being a dick, Ollie, or stop being a pussy. It's just people are actually going through this shit. And I think it also helps as well because, um, like, when people like you guys from the outside and people from the outside are, are say to me, like, you are successful. And it helps that because you're seeing, like, this person who is successful on social media and stuff and, like, book, business and stuff like that. It's like, it's okay to be human. It's, it's like when people have said, like, for Superman, like, and then someone realizes he's Clark Kent and actually got some problems going on or something. We're all human, like, man. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 like, I like that. Because, like, I, I, I look at certain people and I just think, you're not like that all the time, man. Yeah. <laughs> We've had discussions on that. Like, like yeah, we won't name any man, names. Calm, Like, you are not like that all the time. Who are you? Like, that, that's, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, we're all business people and stuff. And, and also, what really frustrates me, but I get, I, I get it. I get it. And again, it's all very matrixy, right? But, like, for example, people who set up a... I don't know, in Instagram, property is that's where I'm in, so that's where I see, and they're all like, oh yeah, we're great, and we're great, and I'm thinking, man, this is fucking hard. No cunt, no, no one's like, it's all like, they're, they're great, never have a problem, they're great, they're superb, they're always, and I just think, you're lying, man, like, that's not, why, why is that, why does that have to be, why is that respected, but the person who comes out and go, I'm feeling really shit, it's really difficult at the minute, but we're getting things sorted, but it's very difficult, like, or, or whatever, why are they not respected? The ones who are respected in this little circle of mm. followers or whatever I'm talking about is that the ones who are respected are the ones who are just wonderful all the time. My brother said something today, my brother was going through a shift at work and um, he works in retail, and he said to me, I don't think it's very healthy for people's mental health to have to go to a job and pretend, pretend all the time. 
Yeah. Like prof- like like people being like the customer service based jobs. He goes yeah, customer facing exactly. jobs. I don't think it's actually very healthy for people's mental health to continuously. Actually, if you were suicidal. Yeah. yeah. If you were that dark, you were that down, but you then had to go to work. Oh, hello, sir. Oh, I'm very sorry that um, you had 1.75 grams of sugar in your tea opposed to 1.6. But like, do you know what I mean? Like, how hard does that to, be? Yeah, if you're in front of the face of a company, you've got to take that shit. Yeah. Something happened last. I went went in one of the pubs, Oak Tree. I can't remember which pub it was. But there was an Ed Sheeran tribute act. I don't even think it should be called an Ed Sheeran tribute act because he was a singer, just performing songs in a good way. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it takes away from what he was doing to say Ed Sheeran tribute act. Did he look like him or sound like him? Looked like him and sounded like okay. him. Had the loop wheel and everything. But <laughs> Probably like, why they called yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> and he said that. But <laughs> he, like he, he, played, like he, played it like he played a bit of S Club. That's oh, fucking yeah. awesome just to right. have a little bit of S Club there. But, and then he played an Ed Sheeran song, Small Bump. And I noticed the waitress had a tattoo on her arm. Um, and it was... A girl, I can't remember the name, it was a girl's name, and there was a date from like June this year, and he played Small Bump, and like she was all happy and everything, and he played this song, and then she was broken down in tears, and like you can see it, I just saw her crying and went off, um, and her, her, one of the other staff members was giving her a hug, and you think, people are going through their own shit. Like we can, but I assume that something happened with pregnancy there, mm. but. Uh, yeah, like you don't ever know, but people. And she's got to be at work. Yeah, and she's got to be there at work. Being it was flying. June, so that isn't that long ago. No. To then have this sort of thing, I knew that, like, um, whenever I heard Robbie Williams' Angels after my dad died, played at his funeral, like, I would get like goosebumps and I would get butterflies because it was just like horrible feeling yeah. like, deep down in my stomach. That we all have certain triggers for it, and we don't know what everyone's going on there. Like um, deep down, and you see celebrities as well. Mm. Like celebrities break down, and people are like, oh yeah, so and so had a breakdown. Like they're almost laughable, but these guys are humans. I've um, I've cried at work. I've gone to a cubicle and cried and cried because someone triggered me. I think I was listening to music while doing a job, and something came up in 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 correspondence with something on my phone, like a message or something personal, something personal, and the music triggered it, and yeah. it just took over, man. And like, I was in a, it was. It was old stuff, but I ended up going to cubicle and just crying. I think having to like be like, I need to come out of here and pretend that I'm, I'm in an environment where I can't draw attention to myself. Obviously, I think like generally the people I work with at the time, I don't think they would have had an issue with me. They would have been supportive. But obviously, we live in a culture where it's like oh, hide it, yeah. go to cubicle, Especially hide like it. The masculine yeah, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. So it's like yeah. it's crazy, and no one would ever know that shit. Yeah, Do you know what I mean, so that's just me. So imagine other people you meet. Yeah, I remember 2012, and I was a manager at Aviva then. And I got the message saying my nan is dying. You mm. need to get to the hospital now. And I was like, there was one, okay, I was sort of seeing that kind of thing, like, you know, as mm. everyone does at Aviva. But that was the only other manager I'd go to. And I said, look, I need you to tell my team, I need you to tell my boss, I need you to tell everyone else that, like, what's happened. But like, I was literally just crying to, like, in front of her. But I had to go a different way around because I didn't want to see my team. Like, they would have been fine. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a human thing to do. But then there's the ego side, and you're like, I don't want to let them see me cry. Mm. Don't show weakness. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think like, in those last eight years, if I was that guy from 2012, that was when I done my last show. So if I was that guy now, I think I'd have been one of those statistics, like in the yeah. most horrible way. Mm. Like, it's fucking crazy to think of. If it's, I think that a lot. I think about when it, I've been depressed various times in my life. I yeah. think to myself, fuck man, like other people have been depressed and took their own life. I'm thinking what. When I've been in a state like that, not like not close to anything like that, but I think to myself, what is it that leads it that way? I'm yeah. like, okay, well, I mean, I'm like, you know, tinkering yeah. with it now, or I'm like, you know, going around the edge of it. I'm dipping my toes in around the edge. I'm thinking, fuck, like, what factors? That thought about it. Yeah, like, what factors come in? Like, what's in my control now to avoid that at all costs? But like, you know, one bit of bad news: my mum's just been in an accident. I'm like, fuck, like, you can't control it. it's external. And you think of these stories of people, it's like stuff is too overwhelming for some people to, to cope with. You can just get like, like I'm not going to disclose who or anything, but yeah. like at a, bro- at a gross site meeting, there's like a really tragic story of like a, dub- a double death. Mm. And it was like a double death within a week of each other. And I'm like, not allowed, not, and out of the blue. Yeah, so yeah not it even like expected, a, no. And that unexpected. could be something that then tips. Yeah. And you no know what's going to come and it's like wow and it's like you understand when you hear you hear those statistics when you're like oh god how sad like if it's something that could have been done but it's like sometimes for on an individual level for a human being there isn't anything to be done for no. some people it's too too traumatic and too chaotic like their whole world's flipped and it's like 
they're in a situation and that's why it's so like psychology is so interesting like the psyche and then you go into like the brain you go into like the reality and like psychedelics are really interesting because you're exploring that whole oh, really <laughs> yeah really cool <laughs> 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 psychology is interesting for me because i think i've classed it as a pseudoscience mm. mm-hmm. you've you, stu- you got a fucking clue yeah you're studying something which is inaccessible it's completely inaccessible. abstract yeah anyone trying to study what anyone else is thinking is so abstract but and I've, never been, like, I've never been that depressed really yeah. like, i thought i was before i've been in certain times but like just a bit down really mm. i think to hear other people's stories on a more intimate level makes mm. me realize that i'm not yeah, it's a reference right yeah, yeah, yeah. but but also and I'm, I've, I'm sure i've said this to you before sam but like i don't really need the bro society chats at the moment mm. i just need our chats yeah like do you know what yeah. i mean and like that's what i've been missing but also not that I would call myself anything. I don't think I, I don't know what it what it is really. But like talking about more philosophical questions makes me understand that the thoughts I have are actually not as depressive as they sound. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I just sometimes I used to just think, what's the fucking point of anything? Explore really? it, but it's more. Yeah. And then you go, but, but then naturally, naturally, I think as a male and as in our society that easily easily leads down to a depressive kind yeah. of thought process if you can't even share it with people as well yes yeah. the people if, are if very isolated no, yeah. they think deeply very philosophical and they're, and they're you think about like, knowing you're like, do yeah. you know what i mean imagine the, the great thinkers and stuff like that and some of like the, the amazing quotes that have been like timeless and stuff like that and have just surfed uh, have just replicated for years and years and years and there's they're so timeless you think to yourself Oh, were, were they like depressed? They probably yeah. weren't because they were probably nourished by life, but they were still so philosophical by it. And I well, think yeah. did those thoughts come out of depression? That no. like when, when they were pulling themselves, like we don't know. We no, don't, we don't, don't know. know. Like, no. You look at all like the the Stoics that, that lived, um, and there's like there's there's a guide I'm reading about all the different Stoics. You think like there was a bit of rivalry in there, and then they did fall off sometimes with their Stoicism. Mm. Oh, of course. And, but yeah. then they brought it back on, and like you can be Stoic, I think, and still have other thoughts. Like, like non-stoic it, it could it could all could all come from depression to be fair but it, i can s- just see how there's such a strong correlation mm. like what is the point of life mm. or what the me- sorry what is the meaning of life Which sounds a, a lot question. better yeah. than what's the point, point of being yeah. alive yeah it sounds Do you know what I mean? they're exactly it? the same exactly the same things but just said in two different ways and one sounds a lot worse than the other yeah one sounds pessimistic one sounds optimistic right? yeah one yeah. and once once you start exploring psychedelics reality philosophy and talking with other people like it's like oh yeah actually yeah that is kind of but like, that's not a depressive thought yes yeah. it's actually yeah. a fairly rational thought it is it's just something that we're not really like surrounded by is it it's not like you stick thought? on you are is it even a deep thought not really people are like why are you going so deep it's a rational thought no i don't think it's deep it's, 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 it's purely rational do we not want to me it in? seems a, the most logical yeah. thought that should be a universal thought it's like, what is the meaning? Like, what? Not necessarily. It has to be a meaning, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I used to just think all the time, like, what's the point of me being alive? Really? Yeah. I don't make any difference in this world. If I die, like, it doesn't matter. Everything else still continues. Yeah. Like, the Earth will still go around the sun. Like, the Earth will still keep spinning. But like, what's the fucking point? So you but could, could you, put meaning on it. So you could just yeah, you could decide looking out of your eyes. Right, the life to me seems ultimately pointless. Not from a negative point of view, it just seems pointless. So I'm going to decide my meaning is to have the best experience I can in, within this limited human yeah. body. So this probably doesn't sound good from a business perspective, but like, because I don't really see the point, mm. nothing really like scares me in yeah. regards to business because I'm like, it doesn't really matter really, does it? Do you know what I mean? But it's usually like, the fear of failure which stops people moving forward. Is that so not a liberating? Yeah. Exactly. Is that not liberating? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. But again, the person who's not scared of failure isn't really celebrated in business per se. If, uh, I say celebrate. Like, for example, we would want investors. Yeah. If I sat there and said to an investor, if we were having a meeting now, and I'm like, yeah, I don't really <laughs> care if I fail. And that's what you play the game, right? Now I'll yeah. keep my 200 grand. Yeah. So you have to play. But like, it's like, I, yeah, it's part of it. Like, it doesn't really matter. If you want to start a little business mm. and you spent £3,000 starting your business, mm. right? And it failed, didn't mm-hmm. do anything. Does it really matter? I had really? a thought then, like, Ever? with regard to, like... Like, fucking hell. Yeah. Like, really? Exactly. Like, ultimately, yeah. like, who cares? Think, think no about way. this, like... Just think as well, this year as well, right, for anyone who wants to do anything, if anyone, anyone's had an idea, 
this year amongst any years, no one gives a shit what anyone else is doing because they're all so worried about them fucking selves. Yep. Right? They're all so scared. Yep. They're all so worried about their job. They're all so worried about all these other things that if you want to start, just do it. Do it now. Yeah. Albeit, might not be the best time if you're a fucking, if you want to start a wedding catering business or whatever, but get it started. Get everything made up. Put, buy the stuff. Do it. And it's like, because no one will care if you never do anything. Yeah. No, no one's got the time to be worrying what Sam's fucking do. Oh, Sam's bought a trailer and he want to start doing a fucking web. No one give a fuck. Oh, cool. Back to that virus thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So think, it's like, let's do it, man. Think about this. Like, this is a random thought that just came into my head. Like, when we were talking about meaning of life. Like, you've got someone like Elon Musk or, like, Jeff Bezos. Like, they've, they've essentially changed the world, whether it's positive or not with Amazon stuff or with, with Elon stuff. But what if in one of your houses someone moved in who then gave birth to the next Elon Musk. That gives you meaning. In a way, like, know, like, that, that, like thinking deeply into that stuff, is like, shit, like, well, if I didn't have that house there, and it was sort of that sort of feeling that, that thinking that I got with um, reading those old Four Pamlet books, or like the bombs and where they dropped. Like, yeah. My nan used to live there, that bomb dropped there. If that dropped 50 metres that way, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Like, I know what you thing. mean, and I do, I do yeah. get it. I'm still, although I ha although I think certain things and blah blah blah, I'm still fairly what you'd call material, not material, a materialist in yeah. the sense that that is possible, but also was possible. That's equally as possible as me selling a house to a couple that give birth to a lizard. Yeah. Science. Yeah, it's just a complete thing that you've it's non falsifiable. Duality. So I'll never physical. know, you'll never know. You can't prove it, I can't yeah. prove it. I so think, to I mean, me that yeah. doesn't seem like a, I can't fit I can't feel like that's a meaning to me because it's non falsifiable. Yeah. Like a meaning to me will be something that I directly notice. Mm -hmm. But like I again I, I also feel it's slightly egoic when people say like their meaning was to help people and like inspire people. That just seems a little bit egoic to me. But at the same time, that is a great meaning. Is it and wrong a, to be egoic? It, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we said yeah, yeah. But like, I think that's great. And like over the last few months, from the stuff that we've been doing as a group and all these other things, is that having that we call it like universal feedback. So like you kind of just roll around in different areas and you'll get a little bit of feedback and, and you'll roll with that area, yeah? That's why like we have a phrase like, I'm in. Yeah. And what's the question? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Before, before you've even, I'm in, like, all right. Why and not? Then, why not? And then something, will, something won't materialise and something else, you get a little bit of feedback from that. So then you just lean into that, like, do you yeah. know what I mean? And like, so I, I have been getting some feedback about being like, Feels fucking weird, but like people saying so, that they find they find me inspiring and they appreciate the energy I have and stuff like, and that that gives like some sort of meaning to my life from that perspective, but it all still feels very macro, mm -hmm. My, micro. Sorry, yeah. very very micro. Mm -hmm. But but I do I do I do see how that could be a good thing. And how I do you do, feel when someone says you've inspired them? But like deep down, how does that make you feel? small part awkward because of how I think like I mean we've had this conversation like how certain people for example look at Louis mm -hmm. right like I almost find it comical that people look at him in that way just like I, I just I just don't get how people look at other people in that way yeah don't get it what way and in an inspiring way I don't get it. <laughs> I just don't really understand that. Like, they're just a human. You're a human. You're mm. a human. I'm, everyone's a human. Mm. Like, I've never really had a hero. I've never had a hero. Never, like, looked up to anyone. I've just thought, like, they're all, we're all just human. That's, having, such, having a, that's a, such a liberating perspective that not many people have ever considered or heard. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Not many. We are born in a society where, especially with social media, we view everybody else as having the keys to what we want. You know what I mean, and, and you've, you've just freed yourself. Being better. That. Yeah, you've just that's, that's the thing. It's you've like, just freed yourself. Oh, that. they're better, they're, and they look up to seeing you're treating with respect and all this. And I just think you're just another fucking human, man. And like yeah. Sam, Louis said to Sam, so he like hang out with me because I knock him down a peg. Yeah, because I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't care. Like most people will treat him a certain way and think he's someone. I don't, no, you're just 
and you're Louis from Norwich, you're not Elon Musk. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, do you know, and, and even Elon Musk, he's just another human, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would never, like, you know, you see these people who like chase people down the street and stuff. Mate, that's weird as fuck to me. The only reason I would like, I would love to meet a lot of people in this world, but in this environment. Yeah. Bring Rich Roll over here. Yeah. Bring Elon and sit here. Let's have a chat for three or four hours. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's, that would be amazing. That's, that's what going wrong. back to like looking at that baby bar port thing. It's like, you look in a business perspective, these guys are up there. Yeah. But when you actually get on an island for four days, you're eating and drinking, you're chatting together there. There's some seminars and stuff. But everyone's equal, yeah, and you're treated as an equal because you're chatting like this. Well, they are equal; they're just demons. Fuck yeah! The like, fact, the fact that they have some random code that's just generated of this money that's backed by absolutely nothing other yeah. than computers by people's opinions of their ideas, and the fact, the fact that like they class themselves as equal because they've got a business that earn X amount of money, which is a complete nonsensical thing. This money that we all yeah. like survive on. To me, that sounds weird. Sounds weird. But like, it's, it's like you know what, what you're I mean? saying. I, like, it's like, uh, but then, there, about Louis, about like, you just chat to him like on this sort of conversation. It's like, if we had that level playing field to actually see these people as they actually are. Yeah, every, everyone yeah. should be able to be, yeah. There's a really good quote, and it's like, people that you are inspired by, and what you see in other people that you are inspired by is just, you're projecting out with your own underdeveloped traits mm. and abilities, and you're seeing it and recognising someone else, Yeah, and you... Are attracted to it because it's actually lays dormant within you, and you're seeing it projected outward onto other people. Yeah. So that's why you look at like athletes, all these famous people love them. I used to go to Norwich games when I was younger, and it used to really, really fuck with me, like my ego, because I loved football as a kid. I think I was pretty, I had a lot of ability, but never for, for factors like, you know, my upbringing and my diet as a kid, all these sort of factors and opportunities and lack of coaches and a dad who didn't like football, all these things, I'd be like, oh God, I wonder how far I could have gone if my dad loved football, all this sort of stuff. So then when I went and watched Norwich as a kid, I used to love them when I was a kid, when I was like a teenager. And as soon as I started getting to a playing age, I remember being like 18, 17, 18, and watching Luke Shaw and Raheem Sterling both play at Norwich, who played for Southampton and Liverpool, and they're both my age, my year group. As soon as I saw them playing at my year group, I was like, Fuck. Wow. I'm not a kid anymore. Like, yeah. uh, they're, up guys, this they're, they're playing where my dream would be to play, right? I'm never going to re- reach it. So it's, a, it's like a, a childhood dream. But I'm seeing them, and I then something switched in me. I'm like, how can I start applauding and worshipping these people that are literally someone I could have been going to school with? My exact same year group, just like other humans. So as a kid, you can worship them, but when you become an adult, you realise. Oh, we're all just humans. We're all just yeah. experiences. I'm happy for those guys and footballers to have those, that amazing experience of like reaching their potential as an athlete and to have those experiences playing in front of crowds, whatever, playing the sport they love. But then I got to a point where I just couldn't go to a, a football match and worship the people on the pitch as if they're different from me. They've excelled in their sport and their interest and their bodies and their coaching and all the factors that go into it. And I just look at famous people and I just find it re- such an ego trip to like look at them and be like, oh wow, like you're so much better than me. You're basically saying, you're so much better than me, I couldn't do what you yeah. could do. Yeah, maybe I couldn't be a footballer and, and someone else is a footballer, but it doesn't mean that I don't have my own specific talents and abilities which I can cultivate. You don't have your own version of football. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you, also, yeah. being good at football doesn't mm. make you a better human. Better human, that's what I learned as well, man. Do you know what I mean? Some of these people are Money, like, money doesn't remember, make you any more of a per- yeah. like. You could you could be absolutely no one, but be the most interesting guy in yeah, the world. Literally, Adam Johnson was a footballer. They played for um, Sunderland, Man City, in England. He's now in prison through like some people. I was the, the rape. The yeah, rape yeah, guy, right. yeah, like molesting a uh, underage girl, or whatever. But anyway, not going into that story. But you look at that and you think, wow, there's some like creeps, some weird people. But when you look at him and think, because of his footballing ability, did he come out? Did he get out? I thought maybe. That, I thought he got. Did he not? Oh, anyway, but, yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, like, think, yeah, oh, yeah, actually, I mean. they're not an admirable human. Well, I respect their ability. Without, without going too deep down this rabbit hole, yeah. but look at Hollywood. Yeah. And all the fucked up yes. things. Look at Epstein. Yeah. Weinstein. Yeah. Like Prince, whatever his name is. Like, do you know what I mean? But, look at all these things that these are people that, and this is, this is exactly what I mean about like putting people on a pedestal. And whether we like it or whether this is my opinion, this pedestal is money. Yeah. Pe- period. Yeah. Matrix money. success. Matrix, it's matrix success. success. Yeah. yeah. It pe- it's money. It's, it's part always of it being money. in the right place at the right time. Because someone can have the best uh, business idea, and there is going to be some connection. 
of actually getting there. Now, there's there's a line in one of Logic's on Logic's last album. It's one of my favourite rappers at the moment. He says, "The best rapper alive is probably somewhere stacking shells." Love it. And it is just like yeah. when people say, "Who's the best wow. rapper alive, Biggie or Pac or whatever?" This sort of stuff. Like, no, nah, it's someone we've probably never heard of. Mate, that's like, and we never will. So good. Yeah. Like, because we're never going to be able to judge everyone against those people. Do you know what annoys me is that. Fuck, I was having a conversation with something. They were telling me something the other day. I'll I tell you who it was. So I was getting a massage the other day at Replay. She was saying she wants to compete at um, CrossFit. She was like, oh, but obviously there's no money in it. But at the same time, it costs money. It's a European thing. Anyway, down Spitfire, there's a young girl who's like British weightlifting champion. But to, in order for her to like keep going, she's got to travel to like China and these mm-hmm. events and do it. She doesn't have the money. Yeah. So she's just going to have to stop. Restricted. So you go, again, you, we can all talk about money and like I say, I'm playing the fucking game. Of course, I'm in property, fucking hell. But I, I just don't think it's a very fair thing that look at, look at all the things that we might have missed out on because of money. That's mm-hmm. just one weightlifter, yeah? Think of all the scientists yeah. who couldn't go to university because of money. Could be money. for their project, which could have changed the world. Yeah. 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 Could have stopped global warming, all this stuff. All yeah. this yeah. thing, we might not have... Like you said earlier about maybe someone moving into your house, you give birth to them. I, that's like a theoretical thing. Yeah. I think I'd almost argue that it's factual that there will be people who haven't had the opportunity because of money. Yep. I, I look I'd, I'd almost say that's factual that there will be more intelligent people and scientists out there who would have the knowledge to make the world a better place, but they haven't had the platform or the opportunities because of money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's what I find such a shame. There, there was a an interview with Lewis Hamilton and his dad, and I love Formula One, like, and Hamilton is one of my favourites. And he thinks, well, it came up because of sports personality here tonight. Oh, like, tonight, I'm pretty certain that Tyson Fury is going to win it. But when someone's just become stats-wise the greatest Formula One driver of all time, I'm pretty certain he should win that. Like, it probably yeah. won't he should have a knighthood. He should win this this award. But like, there's other things because he's fighting for certain things because yeah. of the color of his skin for all this stuff. Like, has made some people go against him. But the interview, like, digressing that the interview was with his dad and talking about how many sacrifices he had to make in karting to be able to pay for him to be able to race there probably was a better formula one or better karting driver before him but they didn't have the funding yeah and so they couldn't continue and i know a couple example. of people about that yeah yeah it's crazy and, be, and, and that's just one sport and one yeah. person yeah. in one year that's the complexities like, of life right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's not an even playing field so, for anybody no I mean, we, that, we should that's really why, like, start wrapping it up and, yeah and yeah couple yeah. hours nearly two hours and yeah like, same as like when when they when the government talk about all oh, this we're really in it together and stuff like we're we? all in it together. You're like what? No, so not. what what um <laughs> yeah. what, what what business did you give a uh, contract to and yeah. uh, how many millions did you earn off that? And like, no, no like, we're in it together. You're over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, yeah, fuck off you. You're in it together, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you're in it together, Matt. I'm you're sure, all like, gonna stay in London. No, okay. We yeah. weren't recording earlier, and Sam was like, "Oh, are we recording?" Um, to, saying something about Matt Hancock. Like, the guys are. Fucking idiot. I wouldn't like, there's not many people that I've seen on TV and I want to jump in the screen and knock that cunt out. Yeah. But I saw a video of Pierce Morgan. Was it Pierce Morgan? I've seen this. Asking him seen about this. the pay rise. I've seen this, yeah. And yeah. literally, he's smirking yeah. and saying, can't answer that. Yeah. I can't answer that. Yeah. And it's like, you smug He, he wouldn't prick. answer about like, when, when you did you first get that straight? Yeah. Oh, it, I just nuts. thought I'd fucking get him in this ring. Honestly, like, like it's horrible, I think there's horrible, horrible so many humans, people with that. There's like, not many people that, like, I don't think I've ever hated someone. Like, and then you think of people, like, you have football rivals. Yeah. 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 yeah, like, there's football rivals. I was like, oh, yeah, Frank Lampard, he's a dick. Gerard's a dick. No, they're not. They're just athletes that play for a different team that I don't support. Yeah. And we have a bit of a rival with, because I'm a Man United fan, so... But that's on. an uncommon thought process, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Most like, people like, go, yeah. Liverpool, dick, yeah. Liverpool yeah. winning the title, like... Okay, I still think that's media hype, but they're just yeah. fake fake news that needs to be fact checked. You've but, lost me at football. So <laughs> yeah, I no, can't but add to this. being a Man United, Norwich Ipswich and stuff like that, right. Man United fan, hating Liverpool, all that sort of stuff. That's a different version of hate that I would use to some of the people that are actually out there putting the news out at the moment. Like, that's think, that's a different. I think level. with Matt Hancock, if you can if you can see through it, you can quite clearly see that he is the front man of the government. He's the guy that they've put in charge to 
deal with all the media interviews, all the announcements, other than the Boris ones. Yeah. He's the guy who basically, I think they've said, look, Matt, you're going to have a massive year. And if you can, if you can ride the wave and you can take the flak and you can turn up at, and give your best at all these interviews and There'll protect be a nice us, in it for it. there's a nice little cushy little pay rise for you. And he's, the, he's like the little weasel man that goes, yes, overlords, yeah. I'll do it for you. And he's so smug in every interview. And it's so detached emotionally from what the, the, the seriousness of the, ex, of the experience for everybody. And I think he's just loving implementing these rules and regulations and breaking bad news and talking about it as if he genuinely cares about the well-being of people. Yeah. Even if he was like sincere that there's a virus that might kill people. It seems beyond that. It seems like yeah. I'm going to use this virus as an opportunity to implement all these regulations and rules, but I'm going to pretend it's for the safety of everybody. Do, do you know, like you have Monday, he puts out notifications saying about London and everyone going into tier three. Thursday, he has the official changes. That's him doing those notices. Saturday, Boris comes along and changes everything that he's just said. <laughs> I just thought about that. How fucked up is that? To, to be honest, like, I can't. I can't even really add to that conversation because I don't follow anyone. Yeah, but like, I, I, I just thought that. Yeah, that's what I did into it once, right? Well, right? well, I think we talked about this. At the start of lockdown, the I was too deep into it. Yeah. yeah, you got well into it before, yeah. and that got to be honest. When me and you had a first chat, that, I started to look into yeah. it a little and I've bit. I've tried not to get into that. Fuck yeah, you're right. Or when you actually go on their website to look at the numbers, but what I was going to say was. I watched one of the announcements, right? And that was the one I think, again, we've mentioned this, is that like... I'd love to they, watch you watch it. They're, 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 right, hold on. So they're, they're standing there, it. they're standing there, right? And it's almost like they've gone, right guys, if we just put a load of random graphs and charts up and some colours, but talk over them, people wouldn't even really look at the charts, I don't think. We can just do what, like, we'll just tell them. But I was looking at it and they're talking about all these, uh, and I'm like, I said to my mum and dad, I was like, what is, why is that, like, that, that, am I not, am I wrong, but is that not mean that the most people that get infected are, like, teenagers up to, like, and up to, like, 24, there was this highlighted yeah. thing, dad was like, yeah, yeah, it looks like, I'm like, but the universities and schools are open? Yeah. So they're the highest, right, there was basically this huge dark line going through with all these young people, and the rest that, like, faded out, but then the next one was, like, deaths, no one, there's, like, yeah. no one dot of, Basically, no one died in that. Was so, a change of language. So, so you look at you look at that, and I'm like, this just makes no fucking sense. It doesn't make sense. But like, from your perspective, knowing about health, obviously you as well. But like, <laughs> to hear like the the health advice, the health advice health for our country is stay indoors, wear a mask. Like to like, what the fuck? Even me, who's admittedly not that healthy, goes like. Fuck, man, like, there's other ways to be healthy. Like, if you want a better immune system, which ultimately, if, yeah. if we got a virus, we have billions of viruses inside us all the time anyway. So to have a good immune system, I should imagine, logic, stop smoking, maybe. Yeah. Maybe cut down your smoking, cut down your alcohol content. Exercise, lower walking your outside, yeah. lower your stress. Yeah, like, which the furlough and stuff would help with, yeah. to a degree, we can argue that. But, like, yeah, get outside, fresh air. Fuck fresh air in the woods, like do you know what I mean? Yeah. Those three things alone will boost your immune system more than wearing a mask will. Yeah. But no one talks about that. So yeah. why are they if they're generally concerned and then oh man oh, fuck I'm doing it, it, yeah, like, it's, man, it's like, like they have just literally tried to get all care. the health experts, actual experts, and just like put them under the carpet and I'm just gonna stand on them and then they're gonna get out of there. Yeah, like, like, because we're going to say we're the like, expert. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Your, your opinion don't matter. They're like, they're like, <laughs> you, you got a PhD, you got a master's, you got all this stuff. You've been studying it for 20 years now. Fuck that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, are, we're. We'll, we'll choose this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Use, yeah. yeah. Vaccine. Yeah. Hello, vaccine, right? So the last I heard, and this, to be fair, in my defense, was not, I didn't read it. Someone told me that the vaccine doesn't stop you from getting COVID, it reduces the impact of yeah. it. You are still contagious if you get COVID after you've had the vaccine, meaning you can still give it to yeah, someone yeah. else. So what happened? So, yeah, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> what? That doesn't seem like well, a vaccine to, to me. Yeah. So you're still, and if you've had the vaccine and you then get COVID, you still then have to isolate. Yeah. So what's the point so of the vaccine? So you only people take it are the people that are potentially at serious, um, serious risk of taking it. Yeah. So don't make it mandatory for everybody. Yeah. And that's the thing that, that that's what I don't like. It's not about telling someone like 
don't have the vaccine, that's not none of my business. It, it should be you choice. Yeah, yeah. Like, and like, I put a post out yesterday. I think I shared it to Instagram saying like, my health is my business. It's not yeah, yours. Yeah, it's not yeah, yours. Yeah. Like, if I get sick because my immune system isn't strong enough to function off or to fight away something that you have or you have, that's my problem, not yours. Yeah. Like, at what point do we actually have? You might be able to take on this for me. I'll try. Can you explain to me if we're sitting in a room now and I've had the vaccine, not this vaccine because we've just said it probably doesn't really do anything, but say I've had a vaccine from something and you haven't, why would I be scared of you? I, I, I can't see why you'd be scared. Fair. I was kind of hoping that you would explain yeah. to me, but like, I, you obviously did, I, can't, I can't it. work it out. I don't get it. It's like still expecting if to I've get burned vaccine, when you're wearing oven gloves. Unless they've got a hole on it, and it's not. not That's why you wear an oven glove. Yeah, you can get that. It's like putting an oven glove on and still not touching it. Yeah. I just. I've never heard that before. I've not heard that before. Worst analogy. But it's true. What a great philosophical deep analogy. Oven gloves. But yeah, I really don't understand that. Really don't get it. Really don't get it. And when people go to anti vaxxers and stuff, I'm like, why? It's not anti vax It's the media that have turned a lot of these people into what people yeah. call so anti best, it's choice they the want choice. best thing i saw about media was in was it berlin there was like millions of people protesting against all these things happen and the, the headline was um nazis and anti-vaxxers campaign against lockdown rules what yeah. what there's like millions of it's, people it's like, <laughs> saying, it's like me saying to you do you want to do 100k tomorrow and, and you're like nah i'm all right I'd, I'd probably rather not and i'm like oh you're anti running. Yeah. <laughs> You're anti running. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm literally just like, I'd rather not. <laughs> Same with me. Well, like, I didn't want to put, you know, I personally don't want to put something in my body where I, I trust my body and I have quite a good relationship with my, my body and my mind and stuff like that. And I feel I'm quite in control of the whole system, right? And I feel I trust that. I trust the innate wisdom and guidance and intelligence in my body to keep me healthy. I'm rarely ill. If I'm ill, I say to myself, I'll be good in a few days, and I am. And you are, yeah. Until something, like, touch wood. Placebo. Until, yeah, placebo. Until something seriously happens to me, I've not really had any encounters of anything too bad, uh, luckily enough. So I, COVID, I haven't had anything yet this year either. So I've not been exposed to it even myself. But some people have had it, they've said they've had it, or a few times, I've not had anything. And I just think to myself, I don't want to put something in my body where I do not know the long-term effects of it. That's just my personal choice. I'll, I take, the, I'll like, take the other risk. Yeah, I'll take the other risk. I'd rather yeah. take the other do, risk. Do you know, if, if I get it, at, I trust that I'll be okay. If you look at science, who should be the most fearful of catching something right now? You two. Mm. Because you've just done an extreme sports event. Mm. And your body, yeah, so your immune probably, system yeah, would yeah, yeah. be shut down for a little bit. Yeah. And that's when people usually get sick. Fuck, I'm going to go get no, a vaccine. Yeah, yeah. Like, it would be fear that would then potentially make you get something. Mate, do you, you know, know what I was thinking yesterday? Do right? you know what was really, really funny about this whole situation, right? And another, you know, when there's universal feedback in a different way, but just gives you a little nudge in mm. some things, right? So when this very, when it first started, way back at the beginning of the year, I was like, what a load of bullshit, blah, 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 blah. This is with, to be in my, against myself, I guess, but like, it weren't me researching anything. I just thought, God, I don't fucking, do you know what I mean? I'm not, I was just, with no, with no knowledge or I was just like, yeah, I weren't thinking much of it. Then it started to get a bit worse. There was more media coverage that this was like, like I say, this was literally when they were talking about that happened in China and it yeah, might it's be, like January, right? And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. And then it was like, oh, there might be lockdowns in the UK. It was, it was getting worse, right? And I had this one day or over a few days, I was like, fuck, this might be bad. I started to really worry. I was like, wow, imagine if there's like post apocalyptic world, people are, everyone's yeah. dying. And I had this day later, I was ill. Yeah. For a week. Stress lowers your immune function. Like. Just like that. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't wait, but like three days. Yeah. Just like that. And then I was like, how amazing is it? The day that I start to have doubt and stress about this was the day after I got ill. And it was like, I wonder how many other people that, hey, have you seen that test or this, the, um, was it Cola in, in Belgium or some, someone, where, someone was telling me the other day where like all these kids got ill. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can actually find it. Because I didn't, you know when you like fact, do you ever fact check people when people tell you no, stuff? BBC does that for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always thought, I always think, I wonder if it's actually real or if it's just mm. something for someone. And anyway, I'm sure that's Paul, the vegan builder. I'm sure that's yeah. him. He was, someone was saying, was it Ben? Anyway, 
these kids were ill in a school, and there was a lot of them, and the only thing they could put it down to was this Coke, mm-hmm. cola or whatever. So they thought, oh, maybe there was like a bad, bad, anything. So they sort of put it over to our people. Was it Tom? Was it Tom? Tom said this. Were you here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so he was saying, and so they sort of put it out and was like, right, everyone, there's dodgy Coke around, pe- making people ill. From then, loads of kids went into the hospital were ill, mm-hmm. right? Turned out after they tested it, all oh, there was nothing wrong with the drink. Power of the placebo. Yeah. Just because they were told that they would be. So if you go, how many people have gone into hospital, or how yep. many people, you go, out of them people, how many of them have just been told? Prime example, in my family, there's a lot of talk about, like, you know, the flu, and my dad always gets the flu. He's always like, yeah, this time of year, always get the flu. Uh, my mum, every time I've done the marathons, and yesterday, like, oh, don't get injured, and, this, and my brother's reaction is, isn't that stupid, isn't that, like, isn't that too much, or isn't that dangerous, and all this stuff, I'm like, fuck, like, they're just impregnating your mind with like neg- negativity and doubts. And I think and it's fine because I understand it's coming from a place of con- genuine concern. Like people genuinely are like, fuck, I don't, I think that's too much for you to do. But yeah. at the same point yesterday when we were running, I was thinking to myself, I was like, fuck, have I broken my foot? And I was thinking I'm, I'm running, like, was walking on it and every step was severe pain. And I'm thinking, fuck, what if I, what if I fuck my body up here and I get in like seriously? I was thinking all this stuff and I'm thinking that's how it leads to it. Do you know what I mean? You're opening yourself up towards that manifesting. And I just thought, Down oh no, like, you, the mind is so powerful, it's ridiculous. And we've, hard, we've hardly even tapped into it, and we've touched on it a lot today already, but like, Joe Dispenza is probably the best for it. And it's like, the placebo effect, it's a real thing. And the fact yeah. that it's a real thing is the most mind-blowing thing ever when you really look into it. So it's almost like, just use that to your advantage. And I think that's what I've done in my life so far with health. I've just rejected any possibility of like i can't do that or yeah this is gonna make me ill or something like that i just genuinely think oh, i'll be all right and also because i don't look too much into the complexities of things i've lost weight and felt my best and looked my best when i've let go of looking into all the details mm-hmm. about it of like how much carb how much calories i need i know the science works trust your body but but it added more stress by trying to be like right i need to yeah more complexity. Complexity. that added stress more that complexity. changes your yeah. biological makeup yeah have a good rough framework, be flexible around it. Like have a few pillars, but be flexible around it. I think that's the nice balance. Mm-hmm. I guess you uh, want to go watch some football. I've got to go and idolise Marcus Rashford. I can feed some kids. Nah. I do want to watch the football because I am a big United fan. and I don't Leeds hate Leeds. Leeds, but I hate Leeds in a football way. I know, Not mean. in a Hancock way. <laughs> Not a Hancock <laughs> hate, a football hate. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we wrap uh, up then? Yeah, what, that's um, been pretty awesome, I think couple of hours flies by man when you chat here. yeah what um what are we going to talk about next time what do we reckon current events like hopefully, current events hopefully not as yeah. much covid stuff but i think like if, if it goes into that like it's, no, it's a big i'm happy like, have a good one yeah that, it's, it's chatting honest. actually no yeah it's chatting about it but i think that if we put these out every couple of weeks um yeah not doing too many covid ones yeah but like, then we'll start getting then. sick yeah, yeah, you're no, right. But you're right. Every couple yeah, of weeks, yeah. there's going to be different things that come out of it. That you're not going to be talking about hundred k every everyone, no, but there's going to be other things which are going to feel like some form of like a marathon in it that that you've been going through. And I think like just like when when we get together with the Bro Society, that something comes up that we don't necessarily think of. So if we plan it, sometimes we force things and it doesn't feel as natural. Like this is just yeah. felt, this has just been a conversation, right? Yeah. Just hopefully people yeah. have taken something from it. So yeah. like, like even that you've just gone off screen for like half of it. No, I'm still <laughs> no, just like, still yeah. Yeah. It's I just, just started like, running, not really planning it. Just, just saying, do, oh, it. Run just do it. it. Yeah, I think like, yeah. we, we uh, I'm, I'm cool to do another one within another like 10 days. That, yeah, that between week. Christmas New Year. Yeah, right? and then, yeah. then get some sort of schedule. It's gonna be, but like you're gonna have shifts to go through now, so it's not necessarily saying that like, we can still get one out every couple of weeks. Easy. It's only a couple of hours, isn't it? Sit down and have a chat. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's good for us. A couple, right, couple of hours it. to have a chat, record it, and if it helps anyone, it helps someone. So yeah, I'm doing this to inspire people. Well, I just like chatting now. I just like yeah, talking. I, know. I really do. I'm really doing your own itch, right? Yeah. yeah, but it's not even like talking. Like you said earlier, but like everything's just superficial, man. It's not exactly. bullshit conversation. So it's good to be out there. On that note. Cheers for the chat. Peace, guys. Till next time. See you guys next time. <laughs>